So uh, for the people that are not familiar, what is Node.js and why, it is, why is it so awesome? <laughs> uh, no, that's a real hardball question there, Jesse. Yeah. Um, so uh, Node.js is a uh, framework for in server-side JavaScript for event-driven applications, event-oriented applications. Uh, and the reason it's so popular is that historically, event-oriented applications have been really difficult, event-oriented servers have been really difficult to write. Uh, you can write them in C or C++ or these other, or Twisted or these other, uh, these other environments, but it's kind of brutal. Uh, and Node is a really beautiful confluence with the power of JavaScript, mm -hmm. the asynchronous power of JavaScript, coupled with a terrific engine in V8, and then mated to the Unix APIs. I mean, if you part of the reason people look at the, the Node APIs and say, boy, it, it felt so right, everything was just where I'd expected it to be, it's because it's the APIs that God intended. It's the Unix right. APIs made asynchronous. <laughs> so it, 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 it's a really a confluence of those three things. But it's one of these things that adds up to more than the sum of its parts, sure. right? And I think, you know, for me, you know, I think you and I have been in the industry about the same period of time. I think we've seen, I, I think, two major semantic revolutions. One was Java, right? Mm -hmm. when, you, when Java first came out, you know, you didn't have to be a C++ programmer to appreciate, wow, this is a big deal to a bunch of people. Um, the second one for me was Ruby and Ruby on Rails. Yep. And it's like, if you were a web programmer, even if you weren't, you saw DHH's 10 minute video. Right, and you were running. Uh, you know, like rolling, that, rolling with Rails. Rolling yeah. with Rails, and you could see, even if you weren't in that community, you're like, this is a big deal to these guys. Yep. And Node, for me, is the, is the, the third major revolution, where the, for, for the server side folks, um, this is a real revolution in, in their ability to write efficient, high performance, high throughput applications. So it, it's uh, really a profound revolution. And unlike the first two, actually results in a higher performing artifact. So What's getting built? A lot of things are getting built. Uh, and so I'm talking about one thing that we built last year for Node Knockout. Um, we, had, we at Joyent have proceeded to build essentially all of our infrastructure on Node. In fact, our interest in Node came because it was an implementation detail for the, the orchestration software to stand up a cloud. But we're seeing lots and lots of stuff being built in Node. A lot of it is real-time kind of stuff, um, where you've got some some real-time inter inter interaction. Yeah, so I, I you know I, I, a specific app actually I just got a demo of just over here in the in, in the courtyard. I, they're still in private beta, um, but uh, sharing to-do lists. So mm -hmm. they are um, sharing to-do lists with. I'm, I'm actually terrified to run this app because I know I, I'm going to be sharing a to-do list a little too closely with my wife with kind of real-time updates. So, uh, but it's it, it you know you got real-time kind of chat. You've got voice on there, um, and it's very easy to go build that application server side. So they, mm -hmm. they can, they've been able to move very quickly. Very exciting stuff. From a performance standpoint, what does uh, what does Node mean for uh, building applications? Like, what are the what are the differences in terms of uh, what people have to expect to build a high performing application? Yeah, I think that it, it, you have to think about less, actually, in some ways. So it used to be that you, when you wanted to think about a high-performing application, you really need to think about your throughput, mm -hmm. and you need to be very careful about how you architect things. With Node, a lot of that does just fall out. Um, and you, they just say, you can just write Node. Node won't let you go synchronous. And the artifact that you get is often very high performing. I, I would always encourage people to be very data intensive. Sure. Um, and I think you know, you and I both see a lot of folks thinking they're doing the right thing. We call it premature optimization. Uh -huh. um, and they you know, think this will or won't perform. With Node, for sure, I would say um, code it up and uh, like, let's go throw some load on it and see what happens. So uh, what are the um, sort of, so this is, uh, Node is driving a lot of changes in terms of event-driven applications, which have a lot to do with the real-time web. Um, so what do you think is going to happen in terms of the evolution of applications now that Node is here? and uh, what, what do you think is going to shift? Where do you think the workload is going to shift? Uh, particularly with just uh, sort of the, the general patterns that we're seeing at scale. Oh yeah, I know. I think we're, we're going to see a whole new class of applications, and I think that you know we've all got these network devices in our pockets, yep. but we're not really using them as networked devices. I mean, we're using them in this almost this kind of dial-up kind of fashion, you know, where we are effectively downloading our email. I mean, it's it, it's not exactly it, but there's no kind of real-time interactivity really. Um, if you and I both have our devices here, mm -hmm. we, we are not yet to the point where we have an application where we're interacting directly with one another. Yep. We're seeing a little bit of that, but not not what we could see. And I think there, especially with geotagging, um, with e with these devices becoming ubiquitous, uh, a whole new class of application is possible. But it, and that application requires the server side to be implementable, and that's the bit where Node comes in. So I think there's already this trend towards these kind of applications, and Node really unlocks and accelerates it. So yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of these. What we call data-intensive real-time apps, dirty apps. 
Um, if people are just wanting to get started with Node, where do they go? Where are the best resources? How do they get started? Yeah, you know, let me Google that for you. It's the old, you go to nodejs.org and you can you can pull down. They've got the, the API docs there, and I would absolutely encourage folks to write some Node. It's very easy to download and start playing around with. Um, you know, a, a friend of mine is a, 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 who I'm. I'm certain is in the audience today, um, is a was a veteran of C-based event-oriented programs. And uh, I, I, he and I, were, I saw him in this is perhaps October of last year, and he was telling me all the reasons why you know, Node is not going to be everything and you know, all the mm -hmm. kind of the Node hype. And I'm like, look, man, if it's the wrong, if it's the wrong tool for the job, just don't use it. You know? right. but, yep. uh, but it was very clear to me the way he was speaking, like, I don't think he's actually written any Node yet. Um, three weeks later, he emailed me that he had not only had he started writing Node, but he had actually um, uh, endeavored to replace a 10,000 line C program with a 400 line Node program. He was he had rolled it out into production. It had been in production for three days, um, and all of a sudden his bit had totally flipped. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is someone who's a total veteran of systems, and I think that, that typifies the Node community. Uh, a lot of real systems vets out there. Great. So for folks that want to get started, just get started. Don't uh, don't listen to the hype. Don't. Ignore the hype and just, <laughs> you know, just code, baby. All right. Uh, and code it up.